Well, hello and welcome to Cheeky Tech. Now, this is my three video challenge. And what is the three video challenge I hear you ask? So this is where I look back at three of the projects that I've done on my videos, uh, sorry, I've done on my channel. And I really want to sort of take an element of each one of those projects and build something, a small little project, which I'm gonna show you today. Um, so where do I start now if you look back at some of my videos you'll see that I did a loco rebuild I got a shunt and I've done all the panels on it and I took them off and I refigured it and made the engine and I thoroughly enjoyed that and that's really got me in the buzz of making and, and, and scratch building um, and then I took um, you remember I did some weathering I did lots of weathering stuff I've been doing and I'm still doing that I'm still learning um, so thanks to a lot of you guys and your techniques it's really helped me loads um, and then if you actually recall, not long ago, I just got some wagons, some like Lima wagons and some old Hornby ones. And I completely blitzed them, took them all apart, cleaned them up and um, sort of made them into brand new wagons. And I have now a nice load of fleet or a nice fleet of wagons. And I'm really happy with that. So with these three elements, I thought this would be a great project. Instead of me preaching what I do is actually me suck eggs and say, Gary, you're telling everyone how to do it. You do it. So I'm going to get some sort of wagon and I'm gonna split the body and the chassis I'm gonna use one or the other uh, I'm then gonna scratch build whatever bit I think is the most to scratch build and then I'm gonna completely weather it with the weathering stuff so I've looked through my box of spares and I've got plenty of plastic card which is good uh, one mil and half a mil and I've got some other gauges as well but that will be enough for what I need um, I've come across this little great Western um, little brake van now this is actually a trying version um, it is pretty old um, I wouldn't like to guess the age of it but it's not actually bad detail considering the years that it was um, so what I've done I've separated the body and the chassis so this gives me a starting point um, some people might say that's cheating why don't you build a complete chassis now building a chassis uh, unless you're an expert builder you need a lot of integrity to make it strong uh, make sure that the uh, wheels are aligned, all that kind of thing. I'm not that good at scratch building. So I'm going to start here and work my way up. Um, and I'd advise that pretty much with anybody that's starting out any projects, unless you feel competent to take on a bigger challenge. Not yet for me. Uh, so that is our chassis. That's where I'm going to start. And then I'm going to get some plastic card and I'm going to make something. But I don't know what I'm going to make. So I'm going to do a bit of research and I'm going to have a look at what I'm going to make. And then once I show you some ideas and learn some history, I'll show you what we're doing. OK, so I've returned back from the PC, had a cup of tea and some biscuits and mulled over lots and lots of pictures. Um, it doesn't give you much inspiration because I don't know what I'm building. I don't know where I'm going. But I did have some ideas and I think it will be really good for this project. So uh, it's going to be a wagon, wagon based. And um, I've noticed that some of these were powered, like engines and that kind of thing. Um, so this is pretty much where I'm going. So I'm going to build something like a Grampus wagon. So for those who are not familiar with a Grampus wagon, this is a prime example of that particular wagon. Now, if you look above the buffer beams, and that's on the front and the back, uh, you can only clearly see it on the front of this one. Uh, you'll see two little planks with uh, about eight little holes. Now, they were removable to put long signs in, that kind of thing, or of a lower load, uh, so they could fit more you know, more universal, basically. Um, and then it had, like, drop sides that was used for pretty much uh, uh, loads of different jobs. It was pretty much a workhorse of the railway. Um, but some had conversions, and some had some weird and wonderful um, tents and uh, sheds put onto them, uh, and then they were turned into, like, shunters. I know, it's a bit weird. Um, anyway, so um, I'm gonna show you what I mean. So moving on to this picture, you can actually see um, a powered Grampus wagon. Uh, this is down at the docks. And uh, if you look in front of the uh, the cabin area, you'll see there's an engine, you've got some sort of exhaust peeping out the top there. And um, you can actually see just above the buffer beams at the front, the uh, two planks, as I explained earlier, have actually been removed. Um, so that's obviously so they can sort of see a little bit closer or it was used to put a longer load on or just basically never put there they've removed them so uh, it's a nice all showing that feature on that particular clip there 
Uh, you'll see there is power, there's lights into sort of shining down it, so have lighting features. Um, and as you can see here, this is the same um, powered Grandpa's wagon at basically a different angle. Uh, you can see uh, the cab, uh, they've got the DB markings, and then you can just see the uh, engine above the ladder well where it sort of enters from the middle. Uh, you'll notice that these um, didn't have proper brake systems. This would have had a handbrake to basically brake it, so same sort of convention as a wagon itself because it is a, basically a wagon. Um, it's just been powered. I would guess these would have a, a power drive chain going down to the front axle. Uh, I don't think it'd be much more complex than that. So these were pretty much a Ford engine bolted to um, a wagon and then a shed put on the top. And that's pretty much what these things were. And this is a great um, picture here. This is a picture from Ken Skane. So uh, thank you to him uh, for capturing this amazing kind of machinery. So this has given me a great idea. So this is the picture I came across from doing my research of the other Grampus wagons. And this basically is a, another version of a Grampus wagon. I actually believe this is a brake van wagon um, converted uh, into like a shunter. Um, I've had a little look at it, the chassis, and as far as I can tell, um, it had a lot of those distinguishing marks. Um, so I, I'm guessing that's a, a brake van chassis. Um, from this, I actually thought this would be a great thing to make my three video challenge, uh, actually to build this particular model, uh, or this particular um, loco, if we call it. Um, it has an engine, it has a cab, and uh, so we'll call it a loco. So I think this will be my new project to actually build this from fresh. So that's given me lots of great ideas. Um, as you can agree, I'm, I'm ready to go. So let's get some plastic card and start cutting. a few drops in there try and keep the decal fixed nice and clean and I've put some drops in a tub because then this will go a long long way otherwise you'll end up with powder in there and they'll be ruined so I've got some little tubs of weathering powders these are some that I've already used I'll put them onto there because I don't want to ruin my my new cutting mat okay so my decal fix take that off of there for a second so uh, uh, now I've got different colours, I'm just going to just dab them on and uh, put them where I think I need, so in the corners, like that. What I'll do is I spray over the top, put some salt onto it first and then say literally spray a bit more grey on top and uh, usual weathering process and then the salt will dry in and then I'll knock it off and it will leave pitted marks underneath.
Right, so this is dry. It's a little bit. Uh, I've left it for a, about an hour now. Um, just uh, so this has got matte uh, black car spray primer on the bottom. That's what I coated the whole plastic with. Then I done my weathering powders on top of that, and then I did a, a matte varnish. Uh, let that dry, and then I've gone over the top with um, decal fix with uh, acrylic dark roof grey. And I've done about three or four coats with that. So what we do is reactivate the um, top layer with a little bit of thinners. Just let that dry in. That won't take long to dry. All right, so I need to put it that way so you can see it. I'm gonna hold that one there and I'm just gonna gently uh, Scratch up the surface, and this gives you your uh, roof peeling effect. So, I'm going to keep playing with this, and then uh, I'll show you the finished article. I'm just going to give that quite a little dusting of a lighter powder just on the top of there and that will just, uh, just accentuate some of the, the rusty bits I think I can leave that there actually. So that creates your rusty roof. <laughs> so there you can go, you can see you get this rusty roof effect and it's like a piece of iron or something. A uh, really good effect and it's just plastic card. And uh, when you put that onto your roof of your model, it'll look something like that. So here is the picture of the real one, and then we'll bring in the model. And there we go, that is the model of it, what I was trying to build to, and I'm pretty happy the way it's turned out. It's been a lot of fun, and it's certainly taught me a, a lot of new weathering techniques, and um, a bit of history as well, which uh, I didn't see coming, which was good. Certainly love the, the weathering effect on the roof. That is um, something I've learned, and. Uh, Thanks to Tim for that. You've uh, and I'll put a link after this video um, of all the the vid tutorial you did on this doing the roof. Um, certainly, uh, really inspiring. Um, so yeah, it's it's um, come out really well. I'm really happy. The only thing I changed more than anything was the logo. I did actually paint a funny BR logo, and it just didn't look right uh, because this was a model. Uh, so I adopted to go for a Fox Transfer uh, BR logo and i just plastered that on and then gone for the small font under there which that and an o gauge would have probably looked quite nice but all in all i think it's turned out pretty well uh, i've got the gas bottle the uh, tank on the side there which i guess is a fuel tank or it could be a tool chest i'm sure that's a fuel tank because there, there would be no space for anything like that anyway um you can see the lamp irons on this side you can see the pitted rust effect that's what happens when you put the 
the salt on top of the rust effect first. So you put paint the model brown. Uh, sorry, I painted it in primer first, grey. Then I painted the brown on top. And then I put salt on top of there. And then obviously you spray the yellow. And then you knock the salt off. And then you get the brownie and effects come out underneath. And a little bit of thinners just to pull the paint off. And it certainly looks pretty good. I'm really astounded how the effects have come out really well. The only little cheat I've done is you see my little grills, my engine grills. They are actually road manhole covers uh, or drains if you want to call them. So I've had a few spare um, and I've added these drains at the side which um, look like little ventilation grills. So a uh, nice little cheat and certainly worked quite well on that. Um, there you go, you can see the exhaust, you can see the roof and you can see all the sides and doors I put in separately and I've added a little bit of detail. So if you look through the window, you could see the cab um, and a little few little, little seats and stuff like that. So that's it really. Um, so all we need to do is put this up onto the layout and um, see what it looks like. There we go, you can see now this is our little project. It's all now finished and done. So my three video challenge is now come to an end. So it's been really good, really enjoyed it, and certainly uh, really enjoyed all the weathering. So there we go. So before I go any further, I'd just like to do a couple of uh, mentions to a couple of you guys. Uh, my channel's exceeded over 3000 people um, subscribe to me and I'm absolutely astounded um, and thank you so much to everybody that um, adds me to videos makes comments and, and tunes in and watches my channel um, it's very um, heartfelt and I, I appreciate that thank you um, I love your comments so we've had a lot of discussions people have talked to me I'm still trying to answer a lot of your comments so please don't give up I will get there in the end but when you get something 3,000 subscribers I didn't realize that um, I'd be sitting there for two weeks with a cup of tea i've gone for a lot of biscuits you guys um so keep the comments coming um so yeah it's really endearing and thank you um jeff asked me about the the roof and uh was i going to insulate it um it is insulated uh and i was I going to get rid of the silver uh glary stuff so i've now covered it over with a membrane and some boards so it's a little bit thicker um so yes i've done that and it's uh, a lot warmer um it keeps the wind out a little bit more and also it's now a little bit more acoustic. Uh, it, seems to, it seems to be more louder on my videos. It picks up a lot more aeroplanes, things like that. So I've really got to pick a right time to, to video now. So um, it, it's nice, it's good though. So thanks, Jeff. Uh, he knows who he is because uh, we've been chatting and it was a comment. A um, couple of other comments were came in from uh, Alan Gray and a couple of other people saying, was I gonna weather all my locos? Not really, not all of them. Um, I do like my locos to to run around the layout. It's 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 all my trains, my wagons. They're things that I enjoy. Um, uh, they're not trophies. They're my trophies. They're not to be sold on. Um, if I sell them on, they sell them as they are. And if it loses depreciation, then heart, that's just tough on me. I'm afraid. At the end of the day, I've had the the fun and the money out of me playing with it or just watching it go around the layout. Um, and then I've seen these videos and I look at my locos. That to me is my reward. Um, so I love what I've got and um, I won't be weathering all of them, but I still will be going through a couple um, until I learn more and more techniques. Um, it's something I will pick up. Uh, some of you guys pick up spray thing and, psh, and they look beautiful. Um, haven't quite got there yet. <laughs> so yeah, that is that really answers that question. Sorry to waffle on. Um, um, just uh, happy modeling everyone. Enjoy what you do. And I'm sure I'll see you all very soon. So till then, take care and cheerio. Thanks a lot.